Hello, and welcome to Abnormal Mapping, episode 79. I'm your host, M, and with me is my regular co-host, Jackson. Hello! It's time for some music. Yes, it is. That's true. You've already heard some music. Yeah, we came in on Color Pulse, Off the Hook, by Toru Minigishi, Ryo Nagamatsu, and Shiho Fuji from Splatoon 2. Uh, this is our six months since the last time, so we're doing another one of these. Hooray! I love these music episodes. I wish they weren't so much work because we could do them all the time. They're so good. I enjoy video game music. It's good. Yeah, you should listen to the music of your video games. I guess you're playing video games, you're hearing the music, unless you turn the music off, in which case you're a goddamn monster. Yeah, but they could be playing God of War, and... I, which I, you know, I don't know why you'd be doing that. Yeah, don't do that. Not appearing here, God of War. <laughs> yes, extremely not on this list. So uh, since this is not our uh, Game of the Year stuff, we're just going to kind of talk to you through these musics, and it's mostly just going to be a good time to listen. Um, not a lot of content, quote-unquote, here. Yep, so No, no goatee lists here. Yeah, none. Uh, so we're just, let's just get into the first set of tracks. We have Majula by Motoi Sakuraba and Yuka Kitamura from Dark Souls 2, and we have both main theme and Delilah's theme from Daniel Licht from Dishonored 2. Thank you. 
that's all right. I really want to play the uh, DLC at some point this year. Mm-hmm. You should. But I don't really play video games that aren't for podcasts anymore, unless it's The Binding of Isaac. So, <laughs> Go kill the outsider. The, the the interesting thing about this year, uh, looking when we were putting this together, is, oh, right, my life exploded this last six months, and I have not played very many video games. Yeah, and well, I always say this, that I've always been busy, but I actually have moved across the country, like, moved house twice, like, you know. Yeah. We've both been in very stressful situations. Yeah, it's weird. It makes me um, not want to play video games. Here is a thing that we have absolutely not prepared, uh, but when editing this... <laughs> You arrange the segments by name. These names accidentally stumbled upon incredible pictures of video games. Uh, yeah, that's true. Do you want to share them each time we come in? <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought of that right now. I don't know if you've got the picture on you. Uh, here, I've got it right now. <laughs> I mean, I could just pull into my folder, but yes. Yeah, no, I got it, yeah. Uh, this first one, not super great. No, uh, as they go, but they will come. They will. They will come thick and fast. This is DS two D two, which I don't even know what that is, other uh, than like Dark, Dark Souls, Souls 2, Destiny, Dishonored two, Dishonored two. Well, yes, I know. <laughs> I know. What if Dark Souls was a stealth game? Uh, it would be really good, actually. Yeah, as, like what if? As long as they spent the time to make it so. The From will do that. Yeah. This next segment that you are about to introduce all of, because I didn't pick any of these goddamn songs. Look, is... these are all good songs, and you then, apparently because you hate people, and me specifically, <laughs> decided to put all of these songs that sound fairly similar in one, like, sugar-filled single segment to get it out of the way and to try to impress upon people how much these songs suck, even though you're wrong. Nothing but jams here. So uh, well, before you get into them, this segment is known as Rush Hoops in my... This segment is known as Rush Hoops. Yes. <laughs> Which just is a fast basketball game that's like yes. on the Switch. And it's... Yep. Uh, it's oh, God, bring back like sports games for humans. I mean, they made like NBA Jam. No one played it or liked it, so... Well, yes, made by people who know how to make video games. <laughs> well, you can't... Uh, Pyre exists. Nah, there you go. I should play that. Fuck. Me too. Um... So it has songs from Sonic Rush and Mario Hoops 3 on 3, which are two DS games I played this year because that's the way I live life. Uh, the songs from Sonic Rush are by uh, Hideki Naganima and uh, Terahiko Nakagawa. Uh, are right There, Right On, and Ska Cha Cha. Uh, Hideki Naganima is one of the greatest composers of all time when it comes to video games. This is true, shut up. Jets at Radio Future fans represent. Uh, the songs from Mario Hoops 3 on 3 uh, by... Um, Masayoshi Soken are Mario Stadium slash Glare Desert, Junior Street, and Cooper Beach slash Sunset Beach.
like you joke about like oh i put all the garbage in one segment i actually didn't mind any songs there's things that you put in this list that i like far less than this so uh fair enough no i like the songs a lot those are good songs um yep. there i just, are there are two songs from a one game in particular that you have on this list that i really dislike so did they both stay on this list uh if you know i don't we might be talking about different things so i don't know um i meant bleed uh you have one song from bleed that song rules it's the two songs okay. from splasher and i'm like eh. oh you don't know the splash songs no splash is great god i might be overstating my like for the songs because the game's good but it's good anyway this next segment uh we're gonna turn it down a little less uh you know, less high energy, a little more chill. We have New Heights in El Machino by El Huevo from SteamWorld Dig 2. And then uh, by Garrod from Valhalla, a game that I did not like. You can listen to the novel not new about it, but it has really good music. We have A City That Never Sleeps and Nighttime Maneuvers.
so we tipped our hand on what's going to be in this segment, Jackson, by complaining about this. I don't. What is Splasher? Because I don't think I ever heard you talk about it until you gave me these songs. So, um, well, uh, Splasher uh, is a video game that is like a platformer. I don't know. Like it's a platformer. You have ink. You jump on the ink, and the ink has different properties. It basically plays. Um, oh, I thought the game was going to put in. Portal 2. Well, yeah, it's, it's similar to Portal 2 in concept, but there's this very specific comparison point that I've completely forgotten. Splatoon. Uh, no, it, so it's it's more like a game about like flow because the game is mostly set up around like so you get to this point of the platform thing and then you put down your sticky thing and then you put down the fast one and then you put down the um the one that can make you jump better to remove the water to blah 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 so it, it it's like a platformer that's based around like these little segments that you get like rehearse and get down exactly and try to perform perfectly it's just a good fun platformer that flows very well okay fair enough it is developed by like uh off sh- like people that quit uh Ubisoft after making uh, Rayman Legends. Oh, okay. That's a game I know you don't like Rayman Legends. Like, yes. I'm uh, the one much- person on earth who's like, "Ugh, Rayman." This is much better than Rayman Legends cuz like it is just the Portal 2 stuff but put into cuz it's not about like solving puzzles with ink, it is about like the moment to moment flow of levels. It is designed for speedrunning in a way that I don't care about the speedrunning, but the focus on having everything be like achievable and not too difficult means it's more about uh, moment to moment flow than it is about like, you know, um, crazy uh, ink contraptions. Let me get there at the end. Like I haven't quite completed the game because it does get fairly hard, but you're yeah. good at platformers. You'll be fine. Yeah. So why don't you tell me about these four songs? Uh, these four songs are, first of all, we have Hall of Heroes uh, by Ian Camp from the game Bleed. Um, we have theme hard and in corp frenzy by david boiter both of which are from splasher uh the company is called in corp that's a little too litigious but sure we'll take it nintendo can get fucked if once in a while i agree um and then there is trace rising by thomas hap from axiom verge a game i still haven't played but i'm told is very good okay it is good i liked it a lot yeah <laughs>
I think that's interesting about doing these episodes is you would think that I bring like all the old games and the chip tunes, and I like we both bring old games, but I feel like you have always been more chip tune focused than I am on these. I think that just comes down to our taste in music. My thing is I prefer like fast paced melodic songs, and that just tends to like the chip tune style, right? Yeah. Um, also, a lot of the old games I'm playing, I'm playing for the first time. You're not going to come in here and put, like, you know, uh, Wiley's theme on this fucking list. We, everyone knows it is good. Uh, so I have some uh, modern RPG sounds for you this time. Uh, from Etrian Odyssey 5 uh, by Yuzo Koshiro, I have the Handed Down Name, which is, like, the Adventurer's Guild theme. The thing with Yuzo Koshiro uh and etrian odyssey is that uh he still composes everything on an fm synthesis and then they turn it into modern video game music and so you can get dlc that lets you play the fm synthesis versions of the songs instead of the original ones and why wouldn't you and so i have the original going into the fm fm synthesis version i love it it's great and then uh from grand blue fantasy i have a song I could not find an English title for this, so I just machine translated it. It is a multi-battle suspect battle. Uh, Sounds exactly perfect. Spot on. By Nobu Uematsu and Tsutomu Narita. Uh, Grand Blue is a game that I came perilously close to falling real deep into and then got out uh, real thankfully. quick. <laughs> no, like I played it for about three or four weeks. The problem is I started playing during Golden Week where they had like a bunch of like free stuff and cool events happening. And then Golden Week ended and I was back into like the normal loop of the game, but I'd never experienced that before. And <laughs> man, you want to talk about like an enthusiasm killer. I was like, oh, this game's actually like way more giving and interesting than people th said. I was in the middle of like the biggest celebration the game has every year. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It is still a free to play gotcha game. Yeah, I didn't put any money in it. I had a pretty good time. I probably put a good, like, 15 hours into that game. I feel like it was money well spent. <laughs>
way I labeled these segments. The next segment is called Bayocore, which yeah. is my favorite genre of music that doesn't exist. Yeah, Bayocore. Uh, the best one that we skipped was, of course, Dig Hala, which is the new Dig Dug game. Yes. <laughs> Dig Dug got real dark and metal. Dig Hala. <laughs> I fucking play the, like, 2006 era PSP Dig, Hug, Dig Dug game. Mm-hmm. God, what a ridiculous thing. Bayocore. Um, that's because this segment has music from Bayonetta. Uh, it has two songs from Bayonetta 2. Uh, written by uh, Masumi Ueda and others, uh, The Great War, Aerial Battle, and Shopping A, which basically tells you everything you need to know about Bayonetta 2. <laughs> uh, also worth noting about Bayonetta 2, it has like 10 composers because it has like 183 tracks to it. It's impossible. The, the soundtracks to some of these games are a lot. Uh, so I just credited Masumi Ueda because uh, that was the credited like organizing composer. And uh, we also have a song from Armored Core 4, which I played for like a day, but there had, was one very specific jam in it called Twist It uh, by Kota Hishino. Uh, it's very cool. Please enjoy the music. <laughs> Thank you. 
segment has a game in which my partner dropped like dozens and dozens of hours and i was like i don't want that to take over my life so i'm not gonna play it that game is pocket card jockey is it is that really that good it's okay it would not this it's too samey like the every kind of match is the same it's just the same stuff with the cards it's a very very simple loop you get the cards you do the match you get better cards you do the match again like you do the horse racing uh okay. i did not finish the game i got to the point where like i'm done i enjoyed myself i, I will think, burn out i don't out think destiny finished the game either to be perfectly honest yeah like you'll get very into the loop for a very short time and then you will stop like it you will it will like it hooks you, but it, there's not enough there to actually ruin your life. So I think mm. it's like a good couple, like a good weekend or week, depending on how much you play it. Uh, and then in my naming these segments, I named this one the sports game that must exist. I refuse to believe that someone has not written this up on a boardroom and then it was rejected. Mario Jockey. Mario Jockey. I mean, Waluigi's the jockey. No, wait, the jockeys are short. Shit. Uh, in the infamous uh, giant bomb quick look of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, <laughs> it is Wario that is riding a horse. Yep, no, Wario is the jockey, I guess. No. The, jo the jockeys are like small, right? It's the thing yes. like tiny. You gotta be, you gotta be the tiniest person because you want to not weigh down the horse. Because yeah, I was thinking about Lanky, but he's also tall and Lanky. You just want to be kind of small in all ways. Uh, you, you mean you're gonna put Linky Kong on a horse? That sounds like a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. You want to be Yoshi rode a horse. That's weird. That's like a horse riding a horse. I mean, Yoshi is a horse. It is not. <laughs> it's a horse with actual shoes on. It's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> Should have tennis shoes on. He, I mean, if he's riding a horse, he's going to have spurs. And that's like fucked up on all sorts of levels. I guess it is. Right. Well, uh, that's because we have songs uh, from Super Mario 3D Land, which I played this December. And that, that game's fucking incredible. Oh, shit. I played, I played it again through uh, right? a little bit this spring. That game continues to be really good. Did you finish? Oh, did you just play a little? No, I just played a bit of it. Uh, yeah, I played the whole thing, got every coin, and it took me like two I mean, days. I did that when it came out, but I... Well, so I, I played this game years ago. I'd finished the first campaign, uh, but you were like, that doesn't really count. And I was like, but it didn't really count. Um, no, then... the, the, the stuff that, I, that makes that game my favorite 3D Mario game all comes at the end where it just becomes ridiculous. And, and like... I had assumed, because I like, I played it before, and I never thought it found it that easy. I was like, oh, the main game's actually fine. I had a decent challenge. I didn't, like, get all the coins. It was fine. Played it this time, because now that I've played some fucking Mario in my life, uh, got basically every coin first time. Uh, you know, infinite lives, all the coins, everything ready to go. Uh, I'm good at Mario. <laughs> yeah, you have been battle-hardened now. I've, yeah, no, that's, I am the Mario person now. It is who I am. For any of them made Mario games anymore. Oh, someday they will. <laughs> One day. Perhaps. New Super Mario Brothers Switch. You know what I mean. Christ. Most depressing game ever. Jesus, please don't announce that. Um, but the songs are Special World, World 8 by Takeshi Hama um, and Cosmic Clone by Asuka Hayazaki, Ma Mahito Yukota, Shigi, uh, uh, Shigatoshi? Shigatoshi Gahara, Takeshi Hama, uh, and Yuya Takazawa. Because uh, apparently everyone wrote that song, and only yeah, one guy no, wrote the know. other song. <laughs> this is what it was credited as. This is what okay, I got. everyone couldn't get enough of that cosmic clone music. Like, <laughs> give me a cut, give me a draft. <laughs> uh, and uh, by Go Ichinose from uh, from Pocket Card Jackie is Start Running Hope and Jazz Racing Jack. <laughs> Thank you. 
they make Mario Jockey, if you get a mushroom, does the horse grow bigger, does the rider grow bigger, or do both grow bigger? There's two different types of mushrooms. The poison mushroom makes Mario grow bigger. Oh, it doesn't actually poison you, it just makes the rider grow bigger and then the horse is slow? That's really good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> no, it's... This should exist. Yes, absolutely. I sh- was the Mario was horse riding in that like 3DS game that no one played with all the different sports? I don't know. I didn't play it. I assume not. Because uh, why would anyone play that game? I know that there's horse riding in that Olympics game, but nobody cares about that I either. Know. Volleyball, hockey, dodgeball, and basketball. No. Nope. Dodgeball. Know. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jackson, we have a new two more songs. These have maybe the best incidental title I put together. <laughs> Absolutely. This segment, uh, to give away the names of the games, is called Mortician of the Colossus. <laughs> we have two songs. We have Rose and Daughters by Helena Heron from A Mortician's Tale, and we have The Opened Way by Ko Otani from Shadow of the Colossus. The only game we've played for a game club on this list, I think. Um, I think so. Yeah, we did it. The game yeah. club's here. Hooray! The podcast! Yeah, remember the podcast where we talk about video games? Nope. Well, in February, we did Shadow of the Colossus, and this is a song from it. Well, after the Mortician sound. Look, let's just cut to the music.
I've been thinking about Shadow of the Colossus a lot. Yeah, me too. I don't like when I played the game. I was like, "This is alright," but then I just thought about it for six months straight. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, "What if I picked up that PS4 when I yeah, will no, at some point?" <laughs> what if? What if I did that? Like, I I guess I could. I shouldn't, but what if I did? What if I did? Yeah, no, what I know I how to did? play that game now. It'll be really easy to play it again. And it'll be so beautiful. Yep. Yeah. What if? Uh, and now we have some extremely good music coming up. I I wouldn't know. <laughs> you know, you've not even listened to it. No. You gave me shit and then you didn't even listen to the songs. Uh, I believe, hang on, I actually have to find the exact quote. <laughs> uh, uh, so the uh, everything else had a segment, but this did not have a segment. It just had the words in square brackets and all lowercase font, Halo shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I played some Halo earlier this year, uh, and you're like, fine, put your Halo music in. Uh, you can edit that. You need. You can put it together how you will. It just has to be under 10 minutes long. Um, and you said, here were your instructions. Just remember to keep it varied. If it's 10 minutes of drums and choral chants, I will find you and throw you in a river. <laughs> yes, because the Halo music, and I admittedly, I don't know it like that well. I have not played Halo because they won't put it out on PC, and I'm not going to plug in my 360. Uh just sounds like the most boring, generic-ass video game music possible to me. Please make me a Beach Boys mixtape. Don't put too many vocal harmonies on there. Like, what Look, are you doing? The Beach, the Beach Boys are good. Halo music is bad. What do you want from me? It's just the it's... stupid theme of Halo. That's all that plays in my head, and all I think is like, man, this really ruined video game soundtracks for a good decade. It's so much better than anything ripping it off, though. Like, it has that actual doesn't tunes. make it okay. Like, Aliens yes, might be a good movie, but I can't appreciate it because I saw everything else first. No, because it's not even a good movie. <laughs> the Halo soundtrack to me is Aliens. That's fair. Halo is also just Aliens. <laughs> yeah. The well, Arbiter. yeah, that's why, that's why I still can't enjoy Aliens, because of all the <laughs> new games are Aliens. Halo fucking killed Aliens for you. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, well, the songs uh, by uh, Martin O'Donnell and Martin, um, Martin O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore uh, from Halo 2 Anniversary and Halo 3. The Anniversary thing has like 12 different uh, credited like arrangers for the remix. Uh, so if you want to go look that up, you can. But I also was too many, too many, too many people. Uh, we have A Spartan Rises, Moon Over Mombasa and Unforgotten Memories. And then from Halo 3, uh, One Final Effort. Is this old Mombasa? No, it's new Mombasa. Okay, why doesn't it say moon over new Mombasa? Oh, I wonder why. Would you want to say it again? <laughs> <laughs> you want to say it again for me there? No, no, no I want to oh, know. Wait. Inquiring minds must know. Because that would sound shit, because they also, have to name I, song titles. I really appreciate there being a song called One Final Effort in Halo 3. <laughs> Finish the fight! <laughs> Finish the fight, Halo 3 of 5, and there's another one on the way. They did not make Halo 4 until 2012. That fight was pretty finished. No, uh, whatever. They made Halo. No Wars one likes Ultra. Halo Four or Five or Infinite. Halo. In they had to They're go going so... to give you the gun these Star Wars have of Halo. It's called Halo Infinite. <laughs> the gun these Halo Wars have. Yes. <laughs> and Agent Evil Awakens. Halo Infinite. Infinite Halos. Master Chief must destroy every Halo throughout time and space. There's only seven Halos. This is canon. Uh, there's only seven Halos in this dimension. <laughs> There's not another dimension of Halos. There's seven Halos and there's the Aren't the, the Flood from another dimension? I don't know anything about Halo. No, they're not. They're just the Flood. I thought you opened the Halo and the Flood come out because they open a portal to somewhere. No, they've been there forever. The Halo's not a portal. I thought it was a big portal. No, it's a big, like, genocide wave. Uh, okay, I clearly don't know anything. I thought the whole thing was it opens a portal and the genocide wave was the Flood that pours out. No, the, the genocide wave was like... So the Flood are like a, a secret, like...
the suit jacks him off. Okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah, so like 10,000 years ago, the Forerunners uh, had a war with another race that like created the Flood. Or so, I don't know, this is all Halo 5 stuff. Anyway, 3 for 3 Guilty Spark with the operator of Installation 04 looking for a reclaimer. So, I don't <laughs> need a suit that jacks me off because I have a game you can play one-handed here. And that game is Super Mario <laughs> Run, which our next song is from. <laughs> Your explicit podcast. <laughs> uh, this game, this song is called Remix Ten, featuring Daisy. So I played Super Mario Run. And I was like, this game isn't very good. And then they, I like, I played the demo or whatever. And then they put it on sale once and only once. And I bought it then. And they had a new remix mode that is actually really good and is the only thing worth playing in Super Mario Run to me. Um, and this, it has like this ridiculous Nintendo remix, as Nintendo is wont to do. Uh, this and the next song do not have composers because Nintendo's really bad about credits when it comes to like these smaller games. Um, it's very frustrating. Uh, the other song is the Labo build music from Nintendo Labo, which is oh, technically a not a video game, but is also great. I love it a lot. <laughs>
I should intro this next one because you didn't play either of these games. Uh, I guess so. I'm trying to think about how to come back to come back from this. <laughs> Just in general, in life, how do we come back from recording these three podcasts? Well, today? Now more... <laughs> well when you put now it like that, now I know how to come back from this. When you put it like that. <laughs> Jesus, what are you doing to me? I'm trying to record a podcast with you. We've both been podcasting for four hours now. Oh, it, the the Skype call says 317. It could always be worse. Master Chief 317. God. Uh, I have two songs from games that are not actually very good, but have good music for you here. Uh, the first one is Ultramarine Deep by Hayata Sonoda and Wataru Ishibari from East 6, the arc of Napishtim. Uh, I like the East games. This sixth one, not particularly good. Look, if you want to play East, uh, come talk to me, but just play Oath and Fogana. It's the best game. It's great. It's the one I recommend wholeheartedly. The thing with East games is they're all, like, none of them are connected aside from 1 and 2 and I guess Origins or whatever, East 0, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can just load in any of them. They're all just, they have, this, like, two characters that are on a journey, but each time they wash ashore on a new land and must go on an adventure, it's a good time. Play East. And then we have uh, Climax Reenactment V3 by Masafumi Takata from Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, which, again, I played for an all-not-new you want to talk about me complaining about a game, go listen to that Danganronpa episode. But the music in Danganronpa has always been pretty good.
as far away from Danganronpa V3 as possible uh, are this, these songs from this segment from a game that we both love with a soundtrack that's even better than the game. Uh, is that true for you? Would you agree with that take? What? The, this... the soundtrack is even better than the game. It's the this is one Lord of my favorite soundtrack. games, but it's like one of... So I, I like this game a lot, but the soundtrack might be one of the best video game soundtracks. So it, they're both good. Like Saying that feels like it solves the game short, but you're probably right. No, it's this is how I would also describe the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Yeah, no, that's true. I like Lord of the Rings, but the soundtrack of Lord of the Rings is special in a way the movies, the Lord of the Rings, are not. Yeah, uh, and that game is a VVV VVV. Uh, we have three songs from Magnus Paulson, Pushing Onwards, Predestined Fate, and Popular Potpourri. Uh, strap in, it's a long one, but it's worth it.
you know what we haven't had enough of this time? It's Nintendo music. Yeah, no, I complain every time. I'm like, oh, we really should stop doing Sonic and Mario bullshit Nintendo all the time uh, because I think of Sonic as a Nintendo character. That shows where I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's it, it, you were like, it's our fault. We play Nintendo music. This is what happens. I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. But look, if they stopped making good music, we could stop talking about it. I blame them. It's true. Look, they've got, like, actual in-house composers, and they don't do anything for a year except, like, work on remixes. If oh, you have a lot of Imagine money, being a Nintendo composer. It sounds like the best job in the world. I mean, a Nintendo any position. So, like, obviously there's going to be a lot of them that are fucking awful and overworked, I assume. Yes, yeah, uh, probably. But any of the, like, higher-up positions that are, like, slightly more creatively free, you just have infinite money to do whatever the fuck you want and then put it to on a game every so often. Because every GDC talk Nintendo give is just unfair. They're like, what if you had all the money in the world? It's great. It works really well. You can prototype forever. <laughs> like, let's, show us, let's show you how we made Breath of the Wild good. So we remade The Legend of Zelda with physics. <laughs> uh, and that was just phase one of our prototype process. Yes. Oh, we just did that as a for fun. Uh, and then we had like Miyamoto climb trees for a year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like everyone in the audience is like, man, what the fuck? I got to get paid here. Anyway, <laughs> we got... Uh, some songs from the game Splatoon 2 and Arms from Splatoon 2 uh, by Toru Minigishi, uh, Ry- Ryo Nagamatsu, and Shihio Fuji. Uh, we have Fins and Fiddles uh, by the in game band Bottom Feeders and Broken Coral by the in game band Ink Theory. Like that Splatoon gimmick, all, ga- uh, all songs have an in game band um, and they all sound different. It's a very good gimmick. I like it a lot more. Games should have like in-world universe soundtracks as a way to get more genres in there with the sound. Uh, and from Arms uh, by uh, Atsuka Asahi uh, and uh, Yasuke uh, Iwata uh, is Via Dulce and Ribbon Ring. Unless it's Via Dolce. I don't fucking know. Via Dolce. But, via Dolce. Via Dolce. Via Dolce. Like, is it Latin or is that Italian? What is going on here? Um, anyway, it's those songs. They're good songs.
Exceptional, Jackson. It's a Beyond. shame that that game is sixty dollars, and I will never play it. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that game is sixty dollars for an arcade mode and a versus mode. Yeah. What if they made another game that was basically very similar in terms of being like a good competitive game, but then just added a really shit story mode on top? Would that be worth it? No, it wouldn't. Oh I'm right, you played the tennis game. I did. They should just. If all these games came out for thirty bucks, they'd be great. They'd be so good. They are charging too much for them. Nintendo, stop just doing this because you're on Nintendo. You never Jackson, will. Jackson, you? Yes. We're not editorializing. We're enjoying music. And in fact, we are done enjoying music. I'm, then I'm not enjoying music, am I? Well, we have I one more song. I can but... editorialize at my leisure. <laughs> Before that, uh, why don't you tell people where they can find us, what we do, and what's coming next month? Uh, you can find us. Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at Headfuls Off. You can find our podcast at abnormalmapping.com. If you want to listen to us talk about Star Trek, uh, which is the thing we do a lot, if you enjoy Star Trek, you should come and listen to Second Officer Slog, a Star Trek book club. We read books, we watch the episodes, it's a good time. It's at uh, Star Trek Podcast. Space. For this show, next month, we are doing Final Fantasy X2, the sequel to Final Fantasy X, in fact. I've heard rumors that it continues after the end of Final Fantasy X, which, given the ending of Final Fantasy X, I don't see how that's possible. And yeah. Uh, well, what if it wasn't his story? Oh, this is my story. This is my story. This is YRP story. Final Fantasy X III, Waka's story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time. And then he hung out with uh, what's her face for ages and did nothing. Uh, we are a Patreon-supported podcast. You can go to <laughs> patreon.com slash mapping to support our show. For $1 a month, you will get The Great Gundam Project, which is me and Jackson talking about a Gundam, of course, once a week. Uh, for $10, you get VoIP Life, which is our goofy podcast in which uh, all the things we say we won't do on mic here, we do there, and it's good. It's not just goose, but it, it's actually like just we're just t- shooting the shit about what's going on with the network, about video games. We talked about E3 once. You can listen in our free preview episode about E3. Uh, Jackson told me the the legacy of Andrew WK in the most recent we, episode. I've got an update for that next episode. Okay, cool. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at em underscore being, and that's it for us. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed the music. We'll be back, of course, in December for our Goatee and other music that we played in the second half of the year episode. That one is always great and incredibly long and a lot of work. This one was actually oh. really fun to put together. <laughs> Those Goatee yep. ones are intolerable. <laughs> We've got to put music beds. It was my fault. I put music beds in the first one and now we have to yeah. do it forever uh but we are exiting on one last song and that is dwelling of doom by kenichi matsubara satoe tarashima and koji morata from castlevania 2 simon's quest 
Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy Goodbye. this banger. You know what's good? Fucking Castlevania music. Oh, it's so good. Remember Castlevania? I do. Castlevania. Judgment.